500 Wainui Omata supporters who are here on the ground at the moment to participate in the haka. And this must rank as one of the biggest hakas I think we've ever seen at a sporting event in New Zealand. Meanwhile, the Northcote Tigers having their team hub. But at the moment, the focus of attention is on this Wainui Amata side, a team that is a real rags to riches story in 1989. <laughs> Uh, plenty of passion and plenty of fire in the bellies of the Wainui Amata supporters who have made this long journey from uh, Wellington. They began on Thursday morning and they are in fine fettle as they prepare for this, the biggest day in the history of the Wainui Amata Rugby Club, Rugby League Club, should I say. Mind you, it's a side made up of six or seven former rugby union players up against this crack Auckland side, the Northcote Tigers, that won the grand final here in Auckland a couple of weeks ago and disposed of Mungaree East, their arch rivals comfortably in the semi-finals here last week. Now this is the Wainui Amata side, or as a player coach Ken Laban calls them, his team of nobodies, which is not entirely true. Laban himself, who plays at centre, has plenty of representative experience behind him, as does their hooker, Alan Jackson, wearing the num jersey number nine. He's had over 50 games for Taranaki before moving to Wellington. It's also a side with some outstandingly young and promising players like 19-year-old halfback Ali Davis and 22-year-old standoff Jason Gilbert. Now the Northcote team, the Auckland champions, with the same 13, the same 13 which beat the Mungaree East here a week ago in the semi-finals. And of course they have some very fine attacking players as we saw here in that match against Mungaree East in the centres, Robert Moimoy and Paddy Tuamavavi and ex-Kiwi Marty Krieger playing at fullback, backed up by a very strong forward lineup, spearheaded by Shane Hansen and Tony Tuamavavi, both of whom according to Northcote coach Mike McLennan should be in the Kiwi touring party presently in the UK. That's Ken Laban with the ball out to the left of the picture, the captain of the Wainui Amata side, as a heavy shower of rain sweeps across a Kalor Park. There's been a lot of rain in Auckland over the past two days. In fact, it's probably just as well this match is being played today and not this time yesterday, when some of the heaviest rain we've had in Auckland this year was dumped on the Auckland Central City area, and the Kalor Park was virtually underwater midway through yesterday afternoon. And conditions are a wee bit better today, but there's been a lot of rain around the city and at the moment, as I said, a heavy shower of rain sweeping down the ground from left to right. Well, Frank Endicott, looking at these two teams, on paper it appears anyway as if the Northcote will start this match as favourites. How do you see it? Well, for a start, you don't play football on paper. You play it on a uh, rugby league paddock. Uh, but I must agree, if I had to go for one team or the other, I'd have to pick Northcote. They're a good, well-balanced side. They've got plenty of names there, but they can also come up with a football. Wainui Amata, they've got uh, Ken Laban there, uh, a, a good try-scoring machine. I like the, lo the look of this Jason Gilbert. I think he's a player of the future. There are two players to watch. And it will be Jason Gilbert, this 22-year-old standoff, wearing the number six jersey for Wainui Amata, who will start this match. The referee today, Mr. Ken Blackler from Christchurch. And now there's very heavy rain here at Carlow Park as... Gilbert gets this match underway. As Paddy Tuamavavi sinks a hefty right boot into it, pushing the ball back into the Wainui Amata half. And the Wellington team take play up to halfway fullback. Wayne Barton. This is Heston Park here. Their young 20-year-old winger making an early break, looking for his support. He had Laban outside of him. Heston plays it to Gilbert. This is Tony Lomax, one of the two Lomax brothers playing today. Alan Jackson gathers in the loose ball. 
Johnny Lomax. But the ball goes loose and it's gathered in by Northcote just a couple of metres outside their quarter line. Tony Tuamavavi. And some confusion in the Northcote defence. Eventually it's the Sean Hoppy that goes in and gathers in up the loose ball. Northcote under some early pressure on their own quarter line. McLennan kicking for the wide open spaces. Heston Park here again, waits for it. Wainui on attack in the opening minutes of this match. And that heavy shower of rain has disappeared. And now there's just a light drizzle falling here at Kaolo Park. The ground is certainly soft as a result of all the rain that we've had, but Kaolo Park with far better drainage these days than it had a few years ago, and the ground really in good condition despite the weather. This is Wayne Gwazinski, one of the Wainui Mata centres. Ali Davis, the halfback. Gilbert putting that ball high in the air. Puts his players on side and takes it as well, but he lost it forward. And Northcote regained possession. Brian McLennan, the captain of the Northcote team. Northcote, who do have the advantage with the wind at their backs in the first half. The ball bounces back into the field of play, fortuitously there for Barton, the Wainui fullback, as he runs straight into Tony Tuamavavi. Dave O'Sullivan running from dummy half makes play up to halfway. Three minutes of the match have gone. No score in the match. This is Johnny Lomax, the open side prop and the Wainui team on halfway. Jackson. Steve Cox, one of the six or seven ex rugby union players in the Wai in the Wainui Amata team is Alan Jackson again takes it up midway 22 and quarter line inside the Northcote half where most of this match has been played so far. Gilbert losing it forward, however, North could have it, so six tackles again. Mason Fisher plays it back to Marty Creeker. Shane Hansen coming in at full steam. The ball a little greasy. Well, there's just a few early nerves coming into the game here. They're still feeling each other out. The ball is slippery and you'll, you'll find a few mistakes happening in the first few minutes. This is Steve Cox. Now this one you have outside has certainly fired up. This the big match of the year for them as far as they're concerned. And even if there hasn't been a great deal of fever here in Auckland over this final, it's certainly been compensated for by the rush of interest that this match has attracted over the past 24 hours since the arrival of the Wainui Mata side in Auckland. I think you'll see Northcote play a very big kicking game in the first half here. Uh, they've got the elements behind them and I'm sure they'll use the, those elements in the first half. So here's the first uh, scrum of the match coming in the fifth minute of the first half. Mike Phillips. To Brian McLennan. Now the chase is on, Barton going back there, Creeker there as well, and Creeker smothers him. Now Wainui having to defend for the first time in the match, only a couple of metres from their own line. Heston Partia trying to run it out. He runs into Robert Moimoy, the Northcote centre, and Moimoy makes another tackle as well. And Ken Laban, this is the Wainui Amata captain, the 29-year-old policeman been such an inspirational force in the rise of Wainui over the past couple of seasons. And Jason Gilbert. But that's not a well-directed kick. Straight in the arms of Creeker. But the referee said he didn't knock it forward. It came off his thighs. Good call there from Mr. Blackler. Definitely a good decision. The, 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 uh, the ball actually rebounded off his knees. So North got on attack for the, really the first time in the match. They've had to absorb a lot of fire and passion from Wainui in these first uh, seven or eight minutes. But they're a very mature side, Northcote. A lot of experienced players in the team there. And Northcote receive a penalty. Wainui Amata guilty of just being perhaps a little too over vigorous in their commitment. And Krika now with an opportunity to kick for goal.
Yes, the tackle actually being made here and a little short how's your father in from one of the Wainui forwards there resulted, resulted in that penalty. This is a chance for early points for Marty Krieger. a long kick for Krieger. He's close to the 10 metre line, so it's a good 40 metres, but he does have the advantage of the wind and, for that matter, the rain at his back. Kicked very well here last week in the semi-final against Mangere East, and conditions were a lot better for kicking than they are today. The ground was dry and hard, and there was barely a breath of wind. Landed six Goals out of, from nine attempts last week. Here's his first one today. They had the distance, but not the direction, and so the score remains at nil all after eight minutes of play in the first half. It's Wainui who come away with it on their own quarter line. Heston Park here. He's looked very dangerous in a couple of times that he's received the ball so far. Jackson at dummy half. This is Dave O'Sullivan. And they're loose forward. Wainui Amata received a penalty. Jason Murray penalised there for not releasing the man with the ball after the tackle had been made. And now Dave Jasinski kicking for touch from the middle of the field. Wainui Amata certainly haven't been overawed by their opponents in the first 10 minutes of this match, but of course there's a long way to go yet. Cox and there's no way through that wall of Tiger defenders there as they just stop the big man in his tracks. Tony Lomax, just 20 years of age, back to Jackson and the little dummy and Jackson's through, he's stepped through two tackles, he makes 20 metres. to Tony Jensen and it takes three Tigers to take him down there is certainly plenty of conviction and resolution about these Wainui Amata players they're prepared to die for the valley today I think well they've certainly opened up very well in this game but the thing is that they, they've got to maintain that for uh, that pressure for 80 minutes they can't afford to go to sleep but they have they've opened up well if they, if they remain within five, six points of this side at half time, they're going to be right in it. Because they'll have the elements in the second half. Mike Kumaha with a big barge for Northcote, but he only makes five metres. Phillips, McLennan. Moving the ball wide to Paddy Tuamababi. Phillips again to Mike Kumaha. But one area Amada equally committed to defence as they are attacked they're not missing any tackles at all waiting underneath the kick is Andre Whitaker this is the younger brother of the legendary Kiwi player John Whitaker who was such an instrumental man in the Kiwi team back in the early and mid 70s and Whitaker plays it back to Wayne Barton 25 year old Wayne Barton only in his second year of rugby league But quite a number of the players in this Wainui Amata side are relative newcomers to rugby league because in fact they have been converts from the rugby union game and but they seem to have adjusted and made the transition extremely well. And the ball has gone loose now, Paddy Tuamavavi. Tuamavavi brushes off one tackle, he's got support here. Oh, Tuamavavi, he should have let that ball go. There was a man unmarked on the left flank. If he had have unleashed the pass to him, they would have scored in the corner. However, Northcote's only a couple of metres short. Dean Williams held up. Plays it back to, to Mason Fisher. A dummy half. They're only a couple of metres away from the Wainui line. Now there's a big test here for the Wainui defence. As Mike Phillips runs out of ideas and tunnels in to Dave O'Sullivan. Brian McLennan, the Northwood captain, back to Shane Hanson, Krieger, Moimoi. 
He put the little kick ahead for Hoppy, but the pass was delightfully intercepted, or the kick delightfully intercepted there by Barton. And the Wainui appear to have weathered that storm well. Their first real test on defence in this match, which is now 12 minutes old. No score in this Lion Rag League Cup final here at Carlow Park between Wainui playing, Wainui Amata playing from right to left against the Auckland champions, Norka. Jackson on the quarter line. Jason Gilbert, very well balanced player, seems to have plenty of time to get his kicks in. Nicely taken by Paddy Tuamavavi to Lawrence Fagan. The left winger in the north side, Lawrence Fagan. Rika handled it well. Rika just about got away from the Wainui Amata defence, pulled down by Lomax. Phillips, Mike Tumata, he takes a lot of stopping, he always seems to receive the ball at full speed. Picked up by Tony Tuamavavi, just a couple of metres outside the Wainui Amata quarter line. Now Northcote starting to amount some attacks, wave after wave of attacks. On the Wainui Amata line, the ball has gone loose and pressure again. Here. Andre Whitaker on the quarter line. So no side yet really able to break the defense of the uh, opposing team. It's been a very tight match so far. Both teams concentrating on making their tackles and Keeping their error rate down. As Gilbert again. Putting the kick across the field. Fagan waits for it. Inside his own half. Very noticeable at the moment that Wainui Amata are playing one-up stuff. Then a dummy half run. They're taking four or five plays up and then putting the, uh, the kick in. Now they're spread and butter football. They're going to have to open the game up very shortly. Or they're going to get exposed gaps in this North Coast defence. Northcote at the moment is just showing signs of starting to throw the ball wider and that's when I think they'll do the damage. McLennan to Phillips, running wide. Loses contact with Dean Williams, his second rower, and so takes the tackle on halfway. Tony Tuamavavi, McLennan, Tuamavavi again, nearly breaks clear of O'Sullivan. And Mr Blackwell, quick with the whistle there, penalising Northcote. having a word with the North Coast captain Brian McLennan. Yes, I think he, I saw the Wainui Amata player retaliate, but uh, I think there was a uh, little bit of hands of failure in from the North Coast player first. Yes, happened just before that. Wazinski finds his touch from near halfway and puts Wainui Amata on attack again. They started with a hiss and a roar, but uh, gradually uh, North Gip managed to absorb all that early pressure and have looked the more likely of the two teams in the last five minutes as they've been moving the ball around a lot more, as Frank Endicott pointed out. Now let's see what Wainui Amata can do this time. Steve Cox takes it up to the North Gip quarter line. Jackson. Gilbert. And there was a break there for Dave O'Sullivan. Lost it forward and Northcote inside their quarter line. Freaker, the fullback playing a dummy half. 15 minutes of the first half of the Lion Reg League Cup final at Carlaw Park. And no score between these two teams. And stepping out of the tackle is Jason Lowry and he's still going. He loses the ball a few metres inside his own half. Wainui come up with it. 
Tony Jensen and Shane Hanson having a little skirmish. Pass here. Jackson. Tony Lomax. Midway 22 and halfway inside the Northcote half as heavy rain again sweeps across Carlaw Park. Flame conditions awkward now. Gorzinski chance here for Wainui. He had Laban coming back on the inside, but he couldn't get his pass out to him. Good smothering tackle made on Gorzinski, taken into touch just uh, 10 metres from the Northcote line. Well, the conditions aren't that good here with the uh, with the rain coming down, but if you look at the pitch, it's in good attacking uh, uh, you can play good attack and play on this pitch. It's not cutting up at all. And I think it's just a matter of time before you see some real good flowing movement. Chance here for Wainui Amata. Jason Gilbert lost contact and he also lost it forward. Drifted away from his support. And the ball went loose as he tried to go on his own. Now Northcote running it out from their own goal line. This is Robert Moimoy, their centre. The Wainui Amata flag for their fans spread right around this ground as Shane Hanson but taken in a very solid tack around the ankles by Gwazinski, couldn't get his pass away and I think Hanson might have lost that ball forward anyway the referee has just called for the scrum inside the Northcote quarter line and it's a very good opportunity here for Wainui yes this, this is a good scoring uh, scoring position here. They're inside the 22. They've got six plays. They must hold on to the slippery ball though. Gilbert. Ken Laban. Laban. This ground is getting very greasy on top now. As Barton, the fullback, running from dummy half. They're now less than 10 metres from the north cut line. No score in the match yet. We're halfway through the first spell. Jackson. Nicely picked up there by Jason Gilbert. The ball went loose. Jackson again. With Jackson going on his own, but once again, Wainui losing possession when they look as if they're likely to threaten. Look at Robert Moimoy that's down, suffering from a knock. The Blackler having, his, having a difficult task keeping control of this match. This match has been played with plenty of commitment and just the odd temper getting a little frayed. As Preaker steps out a one tackle, Marty Preaker dragged back from behind by Johnny Lomax. Ball has gone loose again. This is going to be increasingly a problem for both teams now with the ground very greasy, very slippery, and the ball starting to resemble a piece of soap as Gwazinski makes 10 metres. Barton. Front by more and more. He's lost it. Cool the Barbie. But he couldn't get the pass to Fagan. Shane Henson. McLennan. Taken up by Jason Lowry. Slips the pass to Dean Williams. And he's brought down 10 metres short of halfway. It's Phillips. Lowry. Sean Hoppy. Receiving the ball ready for the first time in the match, which is now 20 minutes old. So we're exactly halfway through the first spell and there is no score in this match. Good start by Wainui Omada. Not considered to be given much of a chance by too many people up here in the north. They've certainly competed well on the first 20 minutes of this match and have had as many scoring opportunities as Northcote. Neither side has been able to finish off their move and the slippery ball proving a bit of a problem. Tua Mavavi. That's a very good kick from Tua Mavavi, putting a lot of pressure on Barton. Took it well. Gets away from Hoppy. Pushes off Tony Tua Mavavi and another strong run from the Wellington, from the Wainui Amata fullback Wayne Barton. He's certainly having a good game, this young Barton at fullback. That was a hard ball to take. He took it well. He kept his eyes on it and he made vital yardage after he took the high ball.
Dead Cox is a room here for Cox. And he makes 20 metres and Wainui are on its back again. So they absorb that pressure from Northgate midway through this first spell well. And uh, now they're coming back at Northgate. And Jason Gilbert, the ball ricochets off McLennan. The Northgate player dives on it midway 22 and halfway inside the Northgate half. Robert Moy Moy. The big prop forward in the Northcote team. It always takes at least two men to bring the big two martyr down. Phillips, the halfback, and the is standoff, misses out. Cross the two in the Barney and the Fagan. Still plenty of enthusiasm out there from both sides at the moment. You can see both sides just starting to stretch the ball, just extending it out to the flank, and then uh, Northcote on that occasion was very dangerous. The ball has gone loose, it's picked up by Jason Lowry for Northcote. Mason Fisher just a couple of metres outside the quarter line no score in the match still after 22 minutes of play quite a contrast to the two semi-finals last week which produced a, a flood of points we saw 72 points here at Carlow Park last week and nearly as many in Wellington in the semi-final down there between Wainui and Mata Mapahat but today it's a light, a lot tighter uh, all players making their tackles a lot more commitment from both players on defence and it's reflected in the fact there hasn't been a try in the match so far. Nearly 25 minutes in the first spell. Ken Laban, the Wainui captain. Gwazinski. Gwazinski, who was a member of the Te Aratu team that won the Lion Red Cup last year. Of course, that match was played as the curtain raiser to the World Cup final at Eden Park. Now Barton, he's had a big game for Wainui Amata so far, putting it deep behind Straker, who looked a little casual there. He probably could have got underneath that and taken it on the full. The bounce was kind to him anyway. He can't get away from Johnny Lomax. Midway 22 and halfway inside the Northcote half. Mason Fisher goes in and gathers up the loose ball. Condition very difficult here at Cardinal Park with this heavy rain still falling. McLennan, the little general. Tony to a Mavavi. Couldn't find his brother Paddy. And the ball has gone loose. the scrum to go down a couple of meters inside the Northcote half Ali Davis 19 year old running from the base of the scrum the Wainui Amata halfback wearing the headgear in his first year of Premier League one of the young men in this Wainui team tipped to have a very big future here's another one only 20 years of age Heston Park here to Jackson to Andre Whitaker midway 22 and halfway Alan Jackson, he loses the ball. And Mike Phillips, but he can't get away from Jason Gilbert. And I think uh, Wainui may have come up with the ball there, but the referee has decided we'll have the, the scrum for the knock-on. Phillips clears it quickly. He sees a little gap, but he can't get past Jason Gilbert. And there haven't been many tackles that Wainui Amata have missed in this first 25 minutes of this match. McLennan, two Marta.
Jason Lowry looking for Petty Tuamavavi. And this rain is really sheeting down. It's a real tropical downpour here at Kaolo Park at the moment as the Robert Moimoy on halfway. And McLennan, what's he going to do? He's a little kick over the top three kick. It's Joe Hoppy's there as well. Oh, that was bad luck there for Northcote because Hoppy had Freaker on the inside. But of course, he knocked the ball forward trying to pick it up on the bounce. And Wainui Amata received the loose head virtually on, on their own quarter line. All credit to both teams here. They're, you know, under very difficult conditions, they're throwing things, they're throwing the wide ball. Very unlucky there. If, if Hoppy had have taken the ball there and whipped it inside the cricket, there was a try on. But these things, you know, it, it happens in these conditions. Andre Whitaker bounces off a couple of tackles. And a boot going in there from Tua Mavavi. And the referee gives the penalty to Wainui Amata. He's got a footwork there. I think he might have taught that at the local nightclub. Dancing. <laughs> well, there's a high number of drop passes there, which is entirely understandable in these very difficult conditions. Wazinski hey. finds his touch. Still no score in this match. We've had 28 minutes of play in the first half. Puck here, up to halfway. Jackson is cocked again. And the ball bounces out of the arms of Steve Cox, and away comes Northcote, Robert Moimoy. Very elusive centre who had such a wonderful game here last week. In the Northcote back line, it's cut Mungary East to ribbon, scoring nine tries. But they're finding the opposition a lot tougher and a lot more committed today in the form of Wainui Omada. They might be the underdogs, but they're playing the game of their lives so far. Another strong run there from Tony Lomax. Wainui on attack, 15 metres inside the Northcote half. Dave O'Sullivan. Jackson. Gilbert. Well, they might be the underdogs, but they're certainly not playing like it. Steve Cox again. Jason Gilbert putting a little kick through, but I think that might be a little too deep. But it wasn't a bad kick in the end, but the Northcote cover defence really had it covered all the time as Gilbert flew through. Davis was there as well, but in the end the ball went there. Just a lovely wee grubber kick there. Certainly applicable with the conditions today. You know, you just think an ounce of luck to score from those. It was certainly on then. And the North gets the face with the goal line dropout. Ten minutes of play remaining in the first half. Mason Fisher. It's a long one. Well controlled there by Barton. Showing good sense. Stopping it with his feet rather than trying to pick the ball up in these conditions. Andre Whitaker. Mason Fisher. But he doesn't get away from Whitaker on the Northcote 22. And Whitaker up and makes another tackle. As McLennan kicking deep and wide and causing Barton to give chase back inside his quarter. Challenged by Tony Tuamavavi, but he gets away from him, but he loses the ball. And Jason Lowry drives on it for Northcote. Shane Hampton, he's had a quiet game today compared to the very active role he played in the match last week. Mike Phillips. Mason Fisher doesn't get away from Jason Gilbert. There are only a couple of metres outside the... Wainui Amata quarter line. Still no score in this match after 30 minutes of play. A long pass to Krieger. He has Hoppy with him. But a good tackle made on him by Grzymski. Hoppy. Paddy Tuamavavi, the Auckland captain. Manages to stand up in the tackle. McLennan. Now there's a little gap here for Krieger. 
but he runs into Jason Gilbert but he's inside he's taken play up inside the Wainui 22 and Phillips they're going to continue to spin it this is the fifth tackle and again the pass is dropped this time from Shane Hansen and it's Tony Jensen that comes up with it tallest man on the Wainui Amata side as Paxton Pearson, it's a loose 20-year-old winger. He gets out of two tackles. Where's the support? He's still going. It's another good run there from Heston Parker, who really has looked the most dangerous of all the backs on the field so far. He had that long, jinky run in the first couple of minutes of the match, and he's repeated another one there. Back Davis driving on the ball, Tony Jensen. And still neither side prepared to yield an inch on defense. It really has been a chapter of heavy tackles and lost balls, really. Neither side having to do much kicking in these conditions because seldom is one team able to retain possession for five tackles without losing the ball. An elbow slipped in there by one of those Wainui Amata defenders. Just a little beyond the range of Krieger in these conditions. So North Pitt with only their second penalty of this first half, which is now 32 minutes old. This is a very good attacking position for North Coast here. They've only got to hold the ball to get near that line and they'll, they'll be looking dangerous, but they must hold on to the ball. A planned move, Fisher, Lowry. But again, the pass is lost, and in turn it's lost by Wainui. The referee says play can continue. It finishes up in the arms of Paddy Tuamavavi. Does not get away from Gilbert, yes he does. But Davis, the Wainui halfback, makes the tackle from behind. North get on attack, however. Shane Hansen. Gilbert makes the tackle on him. Mason Fisher, the dummy half, to McLennan. To his halfback, Mike Phillips. And McLennan decides to go on his own, looks for some support, eventually finds it. And Dean Williams, Williams, away from one tackle, but Cox and Jackson go over the top of Dean Williams, and he's taken down in the quarter line. Wainui, nonetheless, still under a lot of pressure here as the pass is slipped to Tumata. Free kick. Again, the grubber kick, that's not a bad looking kick either, putting real pressure on Park here. The ball is loose on the line, what does the referee say? North could have it, so they've got six tackles right on the Wainui Amata goal line, but I think Fagan might have fumbled the ball there. Yes, yeah, knock on, good decision from the referee. I've got a comment on the refereeing at the moment. He understands what the players are going through and he's having a great game. He hasn't made one blue today. Mr. Ken Blackliff from Canterbury. As again, Parker slips out of the tackle. Now, where's the support? Carried on by Ken Laban. But the ball beats uh, Laban and Fabian into touch. But just when you think uh, Wainui are about to succumb to the Northcote pressure, they bounce back. Just shows you, you can attack from your own line. He went through a big gap then and uh, he made vital yardage. Ken Laban did the right thing. Instead of trying to pick the ball up, I just kick and chase. That was the right tackle. So there we are. 21 passes have been dropped so far in this match. It's in uh, 32 minutes of play. We can put that down to the conditions. Craker. The rain continues to fall, but the heavy shower has passed. It's now just a back to a light drizzle. We've had rain now virtually for the entire match. 
into the last five minutes of the first half and still this deadlock hasn't been broken. No score. Northcote playing from left to right in the first half with the advantage of a slight wind at their backs as well. But they really haven't been able to convert that advantage into points. Marty Creeker has had one shot at goal. That's been the only real scoring opportunity either side has, uh, have had. The Wainui have had to absorb a lot of pressure in the last 10 minutes. And here's more from the boot of McLennan. Barton waiting underneath it. A good support play there is the little halfback, 19-year-old, youngest man on the field, Alistair Davies, there to take the pass as it bounced off Barton, who comes away with it from dummy half, makes play up to the quarter line, plays it back to his captain, Ken Laban. Jensen. Wazinski, there's no way through that wall of yellow and black jerseys. 10 metres outside the 22. Alan Jackson has made a lot of good yardage running from dummy half in this match so far. There he is making another 10 metres. Davis to Gilbert and the little brother kick. And it eludes Fagan. That's a very good kick from Gilbert. It finishes up rolling the best part of 60 metres down the touch line. And it's put Wainui Amata again hot on attack. Yes, they're on attack territorially, but they don't get the foot in here. I, I thought there might have been just a faint touch there to the ball, but apparently he didn't. North Coast ball. Phillips so having to run from the base of the scrum to clear that ball quickly. As the sun comes out for the first time today. Northcote running it out from their own quarter line. Now just the two minutes of play remaining in the first half. The ball moves wide to Lowry, to Lawrence Fagan. Midway 22 and halfway. Northcote again trying to find an, another way through this Wainui amount of defence, but it's been rock solid so far in this first 40 minutes of the Zion Reg League Cup final. Eston Park here has been the most elusive man in the Wainui Amata side this afternoon. Plays it to Wayne Barton. And this man Barton wouldn't be far behind Park here on points either for his performance in this first half. To Jackson. And Steve Cox. Up to the Northcote quarter line. The Hooter will sound for half time any moment. David Sullivan. To Jackson. To Gilbert. Kicking over the top, but into the arms of Phillips. That is the free at the Paddy Kermabati. Now Wayne Barton makes a very solid tackle on him. Moving wide again, Lowry. Moy Moy. But no way past Jason Gilbert. Krika. This is Marty Krika, the man who plays the rugby league next year for the Newcastle Knights. Jason Fisher. Tony Tuamavavi. McLennan. Lowry. Kawainui Amaka still making these tackles with the same conviction that they showed in the opening minutes of the match as McLennan senses a half gap. The pass to Dean Williams has gone astray. And Wainui Amata quick to dive on the loose ball. Lomax, Partia. We're into injury time in the first half. Steve Cox again. <coughs> Gwazinski. Gwazinski. And there is the hooter, is it, I think, for half time. second time it comes on a bit stronger and the referee Mr. Blackman says that will be half time 40 minutes of uncompromising unyielding rugby league from these two teams here on the Lion Red League Cup final at Carlow Park but there is no score at half time and Wainui Amata must be pleased with that first half performance Frank 
they would have to be. Uh, you, you must admire their performance in the first half. They never give it away. They created as many scoring opportunities as Northcote, but now they've got to carry on in the second half with the, uh, with the next 40 minutes doing the same. I wouldn't count them out of this match, but uh, I'm, I'm, the signs are still there for a Northcote win. I'm still going to stick with them. So we'll be back with the second half of the Lion Red League Cup final right after this break. Midway 22 and halfway inside the Northcote half as heavy rain again sweeps across Carlow Park. Playing conditions awkward now. Gwazinski chance here for Wainui. He had Laban coming back on the inside, but he couldn't get his pass out to him. Phillips the halfback. McLennan is standoff. Misses out. Across the two of Abadi and the Fagan. Jason Gilbert putting the little kick through, but I think that might be a little too deep. But it wasn't a bad kick in the end, uh, but the Northgate cover defence really had it covered all the time as Gilbert flew through. Now, back to the Lion Red League Cup final in association with Lion Red Limited. Thank you, Philip. Yes, I'm sure many of the Auckland folk here at the ground at Carlaw Park today have been surprised at the performance of Wainui Amata. And they certainly came here as the underdogs with plenty of support, but I don't think anyone really expected them to be able to match it with this very talented Northcote side who have really been the outstanding team in Auckland Rugby League this year. And we saw that again last week in the semi-finals when they comfortably disposed of their arch rivals this season, Munger East, the team that they played in the Auckland Grand Final. And it was really felt that um, Wainui Amad would be no match for Northcote, but we've been pleasantly surprised that it's really been a cracker of a final, Frank. Certainly, I, I, I think, you, you know, look at the score, nil-nil, you wouldn't have got a better first half. And uh, I, I, I believe that this Wainui Amata side must have been watching Canberra's effort in Australia. Because they're coming up with a very similar one. I just hope they can maintain it for the next 40 minutes. And we've seen a little ritual here at halftime, which is something we normally see at Eden Park. There's the Wainui Amata fans, or the bulk of them, who made this halftime pilgrimage from the opposite end of the ground. And that's what's at stake this afternoon, the Lion Red Cup. There they are now. They're gathered down at the far end of the ground, at the eastern end of the ground, behind the goalpost, behind the try line, where they expect Wainui Amata to spend most of the second half. Uh, best part of about 500 folk from Wainui Amata have made the trek to Auckland this weekend for the Lion Red final. In fact, the support that Wainui Amata is receiving at this match today will certainly be as vocal as the rest of the Northcote fans or all the other Auckland fans here at the ground this afternoon. <laughs> you can see, by comparison, there's a fairly Spartan Northcote presence at the other end of the ground. So back these 30 rather drenched players come for the second half of this match and they'll be delighted to emerge from out of the dressing sheds and find that for the first time this afternoon the rain has stopped. In fact, conditions here rather pleasant just at the moment. The milky sun coming up behind the clouds. And the Northcote defending the goal line from the right in the second half. No score on the match, remember. And let's have a look at some of these uh, key statistics from the first half. It was Alan Jackson, the Wainui Amata hooker, with the top tackle count with nine, followed by Steve Cox, the prop forward, and then Jason Gilbert, the standoff, with seven. Mr. Blackford, who's had a very good game, he's allowed this match to develop well, has been very understanding of the very difficult handling conditions that the two teams have had to contend with on this uh, slippery Carlaw Park this afternoon. As Dave Gwazinski takes the ball a couple of metres from his own line, 
and the second half of this Lion Rag League Cup final, a fascinating and thrilling match and score here with no score in the first 40 minutes and that really was a very even reflection of the first spell. Both teams totally committed to making their tackles and they really did snuff out any promising movements that the opposition mounted on their lines. And the only real scoring opportunity came when Marty Krieger came close with his only shot at goal from a penalty from about 40 metres. Jackson. Jason Gilbert, who has looked a player with far more maturity than his 22 years would suggest. Good deep kick, putting pressure on Krieger. Makes 10 metres from inside his quarter line. Robert Moimoy. Taken around the ankles by Ali Davis, the Wainui halfback. McLennan switching play to Dean Williams. Just unable to break this rock-solid Wainui defence. Shane Hansen, Mason Fisher. But the smother tackle made on him 10 metres inside the Wainui half. McLennan. Tumata looking for some support, which is play black to Moimoy. Now the fifth tackle. And McLennan, their standoff. That's perhaps a little too deep. Barton with plenty of time. It takes the catch. 15 metres from his own line. Warren Barton, who was one of the key players in that Wainui Amata effort in the first half. Andre Whitaker with a strong run. He makes 20 metres. This is the younger brother of John Whitaker and it looks very much like him too when he's in full stride. Tony Jensen takes play up to the 10 metre line by Nui Amata, still inside their own half, Steve Cox, the man who played rugby for Wellington a couple of seasons ago, so made the New Zealand top side as a rugby union player. And a little kick ahead by Davis putting pressure on Krieger, but well taken there by Marty Krieger as he went in, got his body behind it, and smuggled the ball away from Alistair Davis. Very noticeable, Brendan, that the wind that was up in the, in the uh, first half has actually died away, and that wind would have been in the benefit uh, of the Wainui Amata side. Yes, the wind has completely died away. In fact, the shower of rain is now back here at Eden, uh, at Carlo Park, and it's fallen straight down on the ground. It's not coming in with the wind as we saw in the first half, which is a clear indication that the wind has died away. Dean Williams running hard from dummy half on halfway. Northcote now on attack. Mike Phillips, their halfback. McLennan putting a little chip through for Marty Creeker. Barton under pressure again. And that's solid challenge on him by Cricket, causing Barton to lose the ball forward. And that would most certainly be the only mistake that he's made all game. Shane Hansen, the top tackler for Northcote in the first half with 15, followed by Dean Williams, Tua Mavavi and Jason Lowry. Shane Hansen and Penley against Wainui Amada and another opportunity here for Marty Krieger. So maybe this uh, deadlock will be snapped at last after 45 minutes of play. This is an easier kick for Krieger than the one he had in the first half. It's about 17 metres in from touch and it's he's taken the ball back to the 22. has no wind to contend with but he certainly has a heavy shower of rain to disturb his concentration the 
Well, one can only sympathise with goal kickers on a day like today. That can always happen, of course, when the ball's as greasy and slippery as this, as it skews off the side of the boot of Marty Craker, the Northcote fullback, and so the scores remain. Nil all after seven minutes of play in the second half. Come on. Well, who knows? Maybe this match may have to go into extra time before we find a winner. Robert Moimoy. He's got a cluster of green and black jerseys that wait for Moimoy, the Northcote centre. Dean Williams running again from dummy half. Phillips to McLennan and it's noticeable that Northcote since half time Frank uh, seem to be showing a willingness to want to move that ball wide yes they are they're showing it now and the, the, the gaps are still out there you know Wainui Amada they're still defending with everything full commitment full credit to them but Paddy Kermabavi he steps out of one tackle but the cover defence manages to pull the elusive Auckland in he slips the pass to Mike Phillips and that looked as if we may well have seen the first try of the match yet. We may still see it, but who knows? The pass goes astray from the hands of Tui Mavabi. They just tried to move that ball a little too quickly. In these conditions, you've just got to take a little more care with your passes. And just a little too impetuous north at that time to get that ball out to their speedy wingers. Certainly just a little bit of frustration there. The word they're looking for here is uh, is control. They must control the football. It was certainly a scoring move here. Tua Mavavi reaching for the ball, grabbing at the ball, and it spilling away from him. And, of course, the referee restarting play with the dropout. So it's Wainui Amata with possession. Jason Gilbert. Jackson. Now this is Dino Sullivan. Makes play up to halfway. This time it's Johnny Lomax with a little kick. Nicely controlled there by Craker. He's had a very busy game at fullback, Craker. Two shots at goal. Some anxious faces there on the Northcote bench. As Mason Fisher looking for a way through that Wainui defence. He doesn't get any further than his opposite number, Alan Jackson. Tony Tuomavavi at dummy half. Phillips, McLennan, again wide to Shane Hansen. But Shane Hansen aren't, isn't able to break the tackles. As effective as he was last week against Mungary, which set up so much play and scored so many points as well. But this time it's to Amada across the rubber Moimoy, and they won't catch this man. It's taken 50 minutes for this deadlock to be snapped here in the Lion Red final and eventually it's the fleet-footed centre Robert Moimoy that does it. From the play the ball from Jason Lowry, McLennan to Tony Tuamavavi and he managed to free the pass to Mike Tumata who was really charging at full speed, managed to keep his balance, waited till the support arrived from Robert Moimoy, and look at the tremendous speed of this man. He showed a clean pair of heels to the Wainui defence underneath the post. The first points in the match, it's 4-0 to Northcote. Well, that was excellent work from three players then. First of all, Tony Tuamavavi, who got the vital pass Krika makes the conversion at six points to nil. Who got the vital pass away to the prop. Uh, Mike Tamada, who, who showed a lot of pace for a prop. He's had a, white, uh, a big work rate in the game. And the finishing power of Robert Wormley. Here he goes now. Here's the finish of that try from Moy Moy. Once he received that pass, the try was always a formality. Yes, yeah, so I'd have to pay out on that one.
So now a really big test here for Wainui Yamada after this marvellous effort in holding Northcote for the first uh, 50 minutes of this match. And now they trail by six points. Be interesting to see just how this match develops from this point on, whether this is going to see the floodgates open or whether Wainui Yamada can come back. And away goes Hoppy down that right wing. Sean Hoppy sticks out a couple of tackles. And again, it's this man, Wayne Barton, who really has been a rock of defence for Wainui Yamada as he just lunged himself at that kick. Took it on the fly from the boot there of Hoppy and virtually snuffed that very promising movement out with that movement of his. Wazinski. Davis. Wazinski. Jensen. Steve Cox. Jason Gilbert again, kicking the ball back to the quarter line. Do it. Scrum going down just a couple of metres outside the quarter line as Mike Phillips looks for Tony Tuamavavi, but the pass has gone forward. And the referee had spotted an earlier infringement. And Wainui Amada receive a penalty. It's 12 metres outside the 22. Jason Gilbert has indicated he'll kick for goal. This is the young man who comes here to Carlow Park with a prolific record as a goal kicker. Kicked the 359 points in Wellington Rugby League this year. A club record. With his first shot at goal of the afternoon. And just pushing it out to the right of the right hand upright. Disappointment on the face of Jason Gilbert. And the scores remain at Six points to nil. Very interesting point there. That ball was taken on the pool about a half a metre inside the uh, the end goal area. And that's the reason for the line dropout, not the 22 dropout. Yes, the ball was not forced. It hadn't touched the ground and so played a restart with that goal line drop out again neatly taken there by Barton a good opportunity here now for Wainui Amada they've got still got five tackles and they're inside the Northcote 22 as Andre Whitaker tries to spin out of that tackle but nicely taken there by Phillips Steve Fox Steve Cox they're only 12 meters short Wainui Jackson to Lomax tries to slip the pass to Ken Laban, but the pass taken by Robert Moimoy for Northcote. Now Northcote with their six tackles. Mason Fisher makes play up to the quarter line. Northcote ahead by six points to nil after the scores was tied nil all at half time. Jason Lowry. And conditions delightfully pleasant here at Carlow Park now with the rain having disappeared, the wind has died down and the sun shining. Craker. Still manages to get his pass away to Mike Phillips, Northcote, inside their own half. That was the fifth tackle, so in comes McLennan, their standoff, and that's too deep. And so Wainui Amata received the scrum and the loose head inside the Northcote half. With 
possession. One away, Martyr. Jackson. To Cox. Steve Cox. Dave O'Sullivan. Ten metres outside the quarter line. Wainui Amata inside the North Coast half. Tony Lomax. And the ball picked up by McLennan. Across the Lawrence Fagan. Tui Mavavi. This is Paddy Tui Mavavi. To Lowry. Jason Lowry. Now he lost it forward. Larry, who almost managed to shake himself free of that tackle, only to lose the ball. And so Jason Larry forced to concede the scrum, and Wainui Amata with it. Tony Lomax takes play up over halfway for Wainui. Meanwhile, this looks like uh, Bausa Afoa warming up, coming on as a substitute, I imagine, in the next few minutes for Northcote. Phillips can't control it, and so Wainui Amata to receive the loose head just inside the Northcote half. Now we're midway through the second spell, and still only one try in the match. The only points, a converted try, coming in the 10th minute of the second half to Northcote. They lead by 6 to nil. Laban to Gilbert to Barton. Jackson. This is Dave O'Sullivan, who's trying to find a way through this defence, but he can't do so. And Tony Lomax. And certainly the Northcote defence has been absolutely rock solid as well this afternoon. We've spoken of how well Wainui Amato has played in this match, but we mustn't underestimate the fine defensive performance of Northcote this day. Certainly, well, it must be better because they haven't had a point scored against them. But at the moment, it's Wainui Amato on attack. And Dave O'Sullivan, 12 metres short of the line, is brought down. In centre field, Jackson at dummy half. Gilbert, Jason Gilbert, goes on his own. Jackson, Cox, Ken Laban. Jason Gilbert. Kicking wide again, and Davis giving chase. But again, uh, Lawrence Fagan had it covered. Goal line dropout. So both are scrums in the penalties. Fairly even in the match so far. 20 minutes into the second half and Northcote restarting play with the goal line dropout from Marty Krieger ahead by 6 to nil. as Ken Laban taking the ball just inside halfway. Andre Whitaker plays it to Jackson. Cox, but Timata, who's rather similar in build, takes him on, stops him in his track. O'Sullivan. And the ball had gone loose, and uh, one of those North Coast defenders dies on the ball. Brian McClennan, their captain, to Shane Hansen. 
gives his pass away to Tony Tuomavavi. On halfway, ground still very soft and slippery here at Carlow Park, despite the fact the rain and the wind has disappeared. Marty Cricket gathers in the loose ball. Probably the driest part of the ground is where play is at the moment, out there near the centre on halfway. Lowry. Jason Lowry, as he rolls out of one tackle, pushes off another. He made 20 metres. Now Phillips. McLennan kicking ahead. But nicely intercepted and picked up there by Ali Davis. The Wainui Amata halfback. Coffee, get in there. Come on. And Sullivan. <laughs> Blazinski that tries why Nui Amata might. They just can't seem to find any way through this Northcote defence. Correct. Every time I seem to think that Northcote is stamping the authority on this, uh, on this game, Wainui Amata just keep coming back. You know, the, the size of their hearts is amazing. Now there's some room here for the Wainui Amata back. Quick passing. Out to Haston Petia. He's going to have Krieger on. You've got to watch this man. And those Northcote defenders really swooped on part here. They've seen him make a couple of dangerous breaks in the match and kicking the ball away from Partia. Uh, Wainui Amata receive a penalty and another chance here. For Gilbert to kick the goal. Ken Laban, the captain, talking to Gilbert. And Laban now indicates to the referee that they'll kick the goal. There's still plenty of time left in this match. We've only had 22 minutes in the first second half. And two points here, of course, would very much put Wainui Amata back in this match. Nicely taken there by Partia. He had some room, but all of a sudden there was three or four Northcote defenders there, and they weren't going to let this very elusive and dangerous winger have any room to move inside their quarter line. Gilbert, with his uh, second shot at goal, five metres in from touch. Not a bad looking kick, and that's Zodar. Well, of course, there's Kata Pukatapu, the coach of the Wainui Amata side, giving his players some encouragement as they come back to halfway. Of course, Wainui Amata can now win this match with a try as a result of those two points there from Jason Gilbert, 6-2. And this match is far from over. Certainly a player of class is Jason Gilbert. I think we'll see a lot more of him in the future. He's dictating a lot of play out there for Wainui Amata. Just 22 years of age, ex-rugby union player, only in his second year of league. The man who, as I said, kicked over 300 points in Wellington Club League this year. And now has put Wainui Amata on the board here in the Lion Red Cup final with that penalty from wide out. Six points to two. That, I'm sure, will give plenty of heart and encouragement to the Wainui Amata players. But the new man on the field, number 14, David Lomax, has immediately fumbled the ball and given possession away to Northcote. Almost up to the Wainui quarter line. Shane Hansen tries to break the tackle. Hansen to Dean Williams. Hansen who's looking very tired going into the last 15 minutes of this match. McLennan to Paddy Tuamavavi. Mike Tumata at dummy half for Jason Lowry. Unloads the ball across to Fisher. Mason Fisher brought down only five metres short of the line. Another try here would, I'm sure, sink Wainui without any trace. As Dean Williams tries to scamper away from the defence. Some very tired footballers out there on both sides at the moment, and justifiably so. Here's the new man on the field. This is David Lomax. <laughs> a 
The ball has popped loose and it's come back to Tumada, to McLennan. Paddy Tuomabadi, he's got Fagan with him, but he's going on his own. Tuomabadi, try! That should be the ball game for Northcote. A try in the 27th minute of the second spell. It's 10 points to two. It came after Wainui Omata lost possession, running it out from their own goal line. Wayne Barton, and that big tackle made on him by Northcote. The ball popped loose. It was spun wide as far as Tua Mavavi. He had Fagan out to his left, but he wrong-footed the defence, cut back, slipped through the gap, and they couldn't stop the big Auckland captain from going over 10 metres in from the corner flag. Northcote just managing now to find a few gaps out wide in this Wainui Amata defence, which is just starting to look a little tired after a Herculean effort this afternoon. And Wayne Bart, the man who's had such a big game, and tragically for him, losing the ball on that tackle and quick thinking there by Shane Hanson, who gathered it in to Mata to McLennan. They moved the ball wide very quickly, and you'll see here our Tuamavavi cut back, change of direction, wrong foot of the defence, and he went over in the tackle for the try. And it's almost impossible to see Marty Krieger from where we are up at the back of the stand. The rain is so heavy at the moment. Doesn't affect the concentration of the Northcote fullback, or does it? <laughs> yes, it's flagged away by the touch judges. It'll look good from here, but maybe the rain's playing tricks with our vision. But it's 10 points to two. No dispute there. Two tries to nil to Northcote and they now really have a very firm grip on this match. So Jason Gilbert restarts from halfway. Tony Tuamavavi, the younger brother of uh, Paddy, the try scorer. And Tui Mavavi has been penalised. The referee, Mr. Buckler, says there's no need for that sort of vigour after you've been tackled. And this should be a gift two points if they want them. Uh, Laban and Gilbert having a discussion, wondering whether they should perhaps go for six. But with still ten minutes to go, I think this is the right option, Frank. Definitely the right option. Uh, I would say just about a certain two points here. That puts them six points behind. And if they get a converted try, I'd just like you to watch this here. Tony Tumavavi taking the ball in, and the first rule, of course, is with an attacking side. If you hold the football, you take anything that's given to you. You don't retaliate. Bit of silly stuff there, right in front of the post. Going to cost the team two points. Gilbert, he raises the flag with his second shot at goal, his second successful shot at goal today. And now Wainui Amata are back within the six-point range at ten points to four. So certainly a converted try from Wainui Amata in the last ten minutes, if they can keep Northcote scoreless, will force this match into extra time. And Mr. Blackler also just having a word there with the Tony Tuamavavi, probably telling him to just cool it down. Paddy to him above him. Restarts play. Nicely taken there by Parkier. And should this match finish it with the scores tied at the end of 80 minutes of regulation play, there will be two 10-minute spells of extra time. But Wainui Amato will need to score a converted try in the last 10 minutes of this match to force extra time. They trail by 10 points to four. All the points coming in the second half. Park here. He's lost the ball and Paddy Tuomabadi dives over the top of it for Northcote. Midway 22 and halfway. Mike Tumata. Jason Fisher, a dummy half to Brian McLennan, Shane Hanson. 
it is Shane Henson, who many felt should have been in the Kiwi team. And for a couple of big games against the Australians earlier this year for the President's 13, and again for the Australians again the, for the Auckland side. Just like to make mention, Brendan, about the Northcote front row today. Done a lot of good work in there, and up the middle of the paddock, the two props and the uh, and the hooker, Mason Fisher, giving good distribution from dummy half. He's got a lovely pass. Must be from his halfback days in Canterbury. The North Coast team, Brian McLennan, has taken over the goal kicking duties, relieving uh, Marty Craker, who had a couple of misses. This, in, under normal circumstances, would not be a difficult kick, but today, it's a different story. And McLennan, no more successful than Craker. The kick that would have put Northcote out beyond that six-point margin. So Northcote remain ahead by ten points to four. But the Wainui Amata not out of this match yet. But time running out. Only eight minutes to the match remaining. They need to get down the other end of the ground. Big kick from Gwazinski. As the Robert Moimoy controls it nicely with his feet. Then picks up the ball once it stopped rolling. Makes play up to halfway. Northcote with possession. And Craker playing a dummy half. Shane Henson and another explosive run there from Henson, but he runs straight into his opposite number. Tony Jensen. Marty Freaker and McLennan switching play, but again the Wainui in their defence, rock solid. Jason Fisher takes play up to the 22. That's the fifth tackle. McLennan, the standoff, looking for the drop goal to give them that extra point that widen the margin of seven points, but it's nowhere near and taken by Ali Davis, the halfback. So Wainui Amata with possession, but they've got to get down the other end of the field. That attempted field goal from uh, Northcote was the correct thing to do. If it had got there, it would have given them the seven-point cushion. That's what they need. On the quarter line. Gwazinski. But he can't get past uh, Robert Moimoy. Just over five minutes of the match remaining. And Northcote, the Auckland champions, leading the Wellington champions, Wainui Amata, by ten points to four in the Lion Red final. And Gilbert again, carving off another 50 metres with that very good right foot of his. Interesting to see Marty Krieger let the ball bounce out then. He, he wasn't going for the football. He knew he had to put in. Sean Hoffey, who's come in from the right wing. He hasn't seen much of the play out there today. A very strong tackle on him by Wayne Barton. And I think he might have lost the ball forward from the tackle as well. And Wainui Amata now, they have a real opportunity here. They're deep inside the Northcote half. They're in the centre field. But it's Northcote that have won the scrum. That's the really the first tight head we've seen of the match, although Mr. Black is not happy with that scrum, and so he's called for it again. So Shane Hansen and Tony Tuamavavi top the tackle count 21 and 20 respectively for Northcote. Davis to Gilbert. Gilbert! Jason Gilbert, he's still going. Gwazinski, has he got the legs? Gwazinski, he's only a metre short, just lacking a little bit of pace. And suddenly this match has come alive again. A beautiful break there from Jason Gilbert. Northcote have been penalised. Now what do they do? Do they go for the two points or the six? 
Very interesting here. That was a professional foul, and he's actually been put. There's a paddock on the barbie. He's been put into the sim bin for five vital minutes. They're going for the six-pointer. Now, Paddy Tuamavavi has been Zimbin, and there he is. That's his brother, Paddy Tuamavavi. Meanwhile, Wainui Amada. This is their big opportunity with only 12 men on the field. They've got three minutes of the match remaining. And sensible play there by Jackson. He saw the ball was loose. He didn't try and go and gather it in. He just tapped it back. But the referee has awarded a knock-on. <laughs> Phillips. Three minutes of the match remaining. North got ahead by ten points to four. Pitch, Bishop. That's two tackles. Breaker at dummy half. Makes play up over the quarter line. Shane Hanson running at full speed. This is more like the Hanson we know. But Wainui Amato managed to gather in the loose ball. Alan Jackson doing a sterling job there for the Wellingtonians. Gilbert, dangerous tackle on Gilbert, but the referee says play on. The ball has gone loose. And Northcote, I think, have gathered it in. There's a dispute going on there between Barton and Tony Tuamavavi. Wainui Amada, they had their chance there, right on the Northcote goal line, and uh, Northcote minus Paddy Tuamavavi, but they just couldn't breach the Northcote defence. And the Auckland has weathered the storm well, and now inside the Wainui Amada half, they really only have to hang on to possession here and they'll have won this match because we're into the last two minutes of this match. But it really has been a very noble display here by the underdogs this afternoon as Jason Pitcher slips out of one tackle, no support for the North Coast hooker. But Marty Krieger at dummy half out inside the Wainui Amada quarter line. McLennan across to Tony Tuamavavi. Squeezed out with just a couple of metres to go. Fagan picks it up and dives over. But the whistle is gone. Wayne Barton running it out from his own line. Last chance here for Wainui Omada. Tony Jensen, they've got to keep the ball alive. Davis, Gilbert, moving the ball wide to Andre Whitaker. He's having Hoppy on, gets away from Hoppy, Andre Whitaker. He's still going. Full time is up. Gilbert, it's a good kick from Gilbert. It's putting pressure on Marty Krieger, but the ex-Kiwi did it well as he rolled in underneath Gilbert there. And now, Northcote with the six tackles and they should in fact see out this match from here Robert Moy Moy over halfway Moy Moy man he scored the first try and broke this match open 10 minutes into the second spell now Dean Williams Tumata. And there is the hooter. And so Northgate have had to overcome a very strong challenge here from Wainui Amata before prevailing by 10 points to four. And there's a real sense of relief as well as jubilation on the faces of these Northgate players. They've had probably their toughest match all season against this gallant Wainui Amata side who took them right to the last whistle. Wainui Amata still had a chance to force this match into extra time 
right up until the last moment, but they couldn't quite breach the Northcote defence when it really mattered, and the Auckland champions absorbed all that pressure and have managed to prevail by 10 points to four. All the points coming in the second spell. Two tries, one to Robert Moimoy, 10 minutes into the second spell. Paddy Tua Mavavi added another one 15 minutes later. Second try was converted by Krika. And Wainui Amata replying with two second half penalties by Jason Gilbert. But it really was probably one of the best fine red finals we've seen. I'd have to agree with that. That was everyone that come here and paid their money today got, got their money's worth. And congratulations, Northcote. I thought you deserved to win. And I wouldn't take anything away from the, uh, from the challenge and the opposition of Wainui Amata. You can be proud of yourselves. The scenes of joy here at Carlow Park amongst the Northcote players and supporters. They've won the Lion Red Cup final, beating a brave Wainui Amata side by 10 points to four. All the points coming in the second spell. Coverage from the 1989 Lion Red League Cup Final was presented by Television One and Lion Red Limited. Well, back here at Carlo Park, we're now waiting for the presentation of the Lion Red Cup to Northcote. So the symbol of domestic supremacy in New Zealand Rugby League at club level remains here in Auckland, although there was a few anxious moments here this afternoon and Wainui Amata suggested on more than one occasion that for the first time the Lion Red Cup may be heading south. Mike McLennan, the coach of the Northcote team, I'm sure a very relieved and happy man having guided this Northcote side, a team without any stars, there's no one in the Northcote team that made the Kiwi team but they've got some very talented players in their side nonetheless. Mr George Rainey, chairman of the New Zealand Rugby League, making the presentation of the Lion Red Cup. There's Arthur Collins in the red, uh, to the right there, the chairman of the Northgate Club. Congratulations. And Mason Fisher. Uh, Jason Murray and Mike Tumata, the forwards who played some big games here today. It was a match that really lived up to its billing as a true final. Very tough competitive match and the first minute to the last and there's Brian McLennan, the son of ex-Kiwi Mike McLennan who coached at his Northcote team. So a joyous day for the McLennan family with the father and son playing such a big part in the success of the Northcote team this year, adding the Lion Red Cup to the Fox Memorial and the Auckland Championship title as well. Um, I'd like to thank New Zealand Brewery for his sponsorship. Uh, I'd really like to thank Wainui and Mata, that was one tough game. Special <laughs> thanks to all our supporters that down there every day and they, they get right behind us. And I'd like to thank the management, the coach and all the boys. Well done, folks. <laughs> So some nice words there from Mike McLennan to his own players and supporters as well as acknowledging this gallant performance from Wainui Amata this afternoon. And Mike McLennan, coach of the Northcote team, being congratulated by his players as well as the members of the victorious team received their victors medals. There's Marty Creaker, the ex-Kiwi, had a big game at fullback playing his league next year for the Newcastle Knights in the Sydney competition and what a nice way to finish his club rugby league here in New Zealand. Well There's a Paddy Tuamavavi who just uh, spoiled his performance here today with that professional foul in the last couple of minutes of the match with Storm Sinbin. <laughs> Mike Phillips there as well. Mike Tumata. There's Mike Phillips, the little live wire halfway. Tony Tuma Barbie. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jason Lowry, and Mason Fisher, son of Jim Fisher, the 1971 Kiwi. In fact, there are three members of the Talker team who are sons of the quite famous New Zealand Kiwi, Lawrence Fagan, their winger, his father Jack Fagan was a member of the New Zealand team, and Mason Fisher, whose father also, uh, another legendary Kiwi, as well as, of course, their coach, Mike McLennan, who was the fullback in the New Zealand team who brought off that uh, famous 24-3 victory of Australia here in Cowdell Pack back in 1971 and Mason Fisher the hooker the son of uh, Jim Fisher who was also a member of the Triumph in 1971 Kiwis in Britain and France so there they are the New Zealand club champions for the next 12 months Northgate of Auckland